Okay, so as you can see, this brush is hindering my view. So we are going to go ahead and give this a crack with the BCRM 175 flail mower. I'll go over all the specs and everything uh, later on. I know we all just want to see this thing work. So let's go ahead and get started. Starting out this project, I had no path in here, so I had to just plow through to get a line started where I could then use the mower offset. So for my next trick, let me show you how I put a big stick through the uh, well through the grill of the Kubota. It did not hit the radiator, thankfully, and why these bars are all bent up. And this is not a knock on the equipment at all. When you're going over big stuff like this this is a good four inches twice what this machine is rated to do when you're doing it lift the flail mower all the way up back over it and then lower it down on top trying to just plow them over not realizing how big they were is how I push these bars in so again not a knock on the equipment at all this has far exceeded my expectations but I will show you how I was getting this really thick, heavy stuff. So, are there any other questions on how I bent the flail mower and put a stick through the hood of the Kubota? So, Jack at Nova Tractor says it can handle two inches and on occasion slightly bigger. Jack's a liar. Um, this can handle four inch trees when done with caution. There is a certain way you gotta go about it. Uh, like I said, put it all the way up. You won't bend those bars like I did and just ease into them. This is a one and done. Once I get this land cleared, the flail mower will only be being used to keep the trails clear. Uh, so this is being very abusive on this. Um, 
My other option, again, was to rent a forestry mulcher and a skid steer, $2,400 a day. This equipment cost me $33.50. So I figure if I get this project done and there's nothing left of it, it's already paid for itself. Um, but it's handling it just fine. I'm gonna need a whole new set of teeth when I'm done this. I'm gonna need to replace a couple other pieces. Um, but overall, I'm very happy with it and I would highly recommend it. If you're simply clearing underbrush and fields, no question. I'm basically clearing woods here. I mean, these are thick, thick bushes that have overtaken this field. Um, so yeah, the light stuff though, it's just plowing right through, no problem at all. Uh, so again, great piece of equipment, highly recommended. First of all, to sum it all up, highly recommended. It's meant to be used for up to two inch brush. I was taking down four inch brush, um, very durable. Don't let this deceive you. I beat the living hell out of this. So this does not bother me at all. I'll take that off, straighten it back out once I'm done this project and it'll be good to go. I'm doing uh, a once and done project here, clearing these overgrown fields. After that, this will be being used for what it was intended. Um, just very small brush and mostly just uh, grass and that. But very, very durable. So some things to point out when you first get this. It comes dry. Make sure you add one liter of the 85-140 weight oil. Make sure you grease all the fittings. I mean, I broke this too. You, I mean, you saw what I was plowing through up there. Make sure you go over the whole equipment, grease all the fittings. Assembly is not hard. When you go to assemble it, you'll have to back your tractor up to it and hook up the hydraulic lines to be able to move this in the orientation you need to put these bolts on. And then you'll need to orient it again to put the other piece on. Assembly quite literally took about 20 minutes. Not hard at all um, once you realize what's going on with it. I would recommend you retighten your teeth or at least check the teeth every three, maybe six hours. I don't know if it's because of the heavy brush I'm mowing down, why they keep vibrating loose, but I've had to tighten them up once after six hours, the next time they were working loose after three. So I would just check those. I'm going to spend a couple hours, I'm going to tighten the teeth again, and I'm going to spend a couple hours just doing grass this hay field here and I'm gonna see if that makes a difference on the teeth working loose or not and I'll put that in the comments some other things to be aware of these hydraulic lines are very very long and these two kept getting in the way so I tied them up here and then they still got loose and got pinched down here in my three-point so I'm gonna have to tie them up again with more zip strips or a piece of cable or something to keep these really long ones from getting in the way. So along with greasing the fittings and adding oil to the gearbox, also make sure you tighten all of the hydraulic lines before you take this out. I'm a half mile up the field there and this here line loosened up on me and sprayed hydraulic fluid all over. So make sure you double check all your hydraulic lines before you get started. 
Now, some things I had read in the forums as far as negatives was some people said it was cheap hardware and they had to go to the hardware store and buy grade eight hardware. That, if that was an issue, apparently has been taken care of. All the hardware on the uh, teeth are grade 10.9. Um, everything else is at least grade eight on this. And then another thing I read in the forums was on the guard here, I guess these used to be cotter pins and somebody complained about them breaking. They are now nuts and bolts. And with the abuse I'm putting this through, even those got bent, but they did not come off. So it appears as though they are listening as they get feedback about this and they are fixing it up and upgrading it as they go. So those issues have been resolved. Let's go ahead and take a look underneath. So here we are underneath. Again, the stuff I was taking down was like four inch trees. Um, I'm sure there was a couple rocks in there I'm not aware of. These teeth are holding up very, very well. I am gonna replace them all once I'm done with this project. These will be my beater teeth. But again, make sure you check these every couple of hours. I had a couple where the nuts were completely off. Luckily, the teeth didn't come off. And then I also had two of these vibrate out on me and a section of that fell off and got chewed up. But again, I don't blame the equipment for this. I am definitely beating on this machine. So nothing that has broken so far um, is anything I would even be remotely concerned about if I was using this for its intended purpose. I figure my other option was $2,400 a day for a forestry mulcher. I paid $3,350 for this. So again, if I get this field cleared with this machine, it is paid for itself. These bars are not light. Again, I really beat on this. And I think that's just about covers everything I wanted to say about this. Jack at Nova Tractor has been more than helpful, um, helping me out with uh, anything I needed, getting me replacement parts as I broke this. Um, again, I'm going to, I'm pretty much done with the really bad beating where I had to be backing over the large stuff. Now I can just have this extended out to the side and take it down the way it was meant, but I'm still gonna be taking down some pretty large brush that is not intended for this. Um, so I'm gonna probably have a few more pieces to replace before it's all said and done. But again, for the money, you absolutely cannot beat this. Extends all the way out to the side, goes up to 90 degrees. I'm sure you're aware of all the features. Um, just absolutely love it. Can't say enough about it. And I can't say enough about Jack at Nova Tractor and all his help. So again, highly recommended. Hope you enjoyed this video. If it did, please hit it with a like and subscribe. Um, this is one review on this product. I have reviews on other products and also cover some other things uh, for Kubota tractors. Really appreciate you watching and I thank you for your support.